Hey guys, my name is Shy. Welcome to my channel. This is a yes or no pick a card reading using the Moonology deck. See how the energy of the card is really resonating with your question and go with, you know, the energy resonance rather than whatever I say is the specific yes or no answer. So we have here card number one, card number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and number ten. All right, card number one. Believe in the impossible. Blue moon. <laughs> um, this is a yes. This one is unambiguous. This is not just a yes. This is like a super yes. Whatever you have been, whatever you're asking about, whatever you're wondering about, even if it seems totally crazy, like even if it will only happen once in a blue moon, this is, you've got your blue moon here. <laughs> This is almost like saying, you know, when pigs fly or when hell freezes over and then you see a pig flying, you know, through frozen hell. So I, I'm happy to say that this is like an unequivocal yes, even if you are asking crazy uh, shoot the moon style questions. And there's something else I really need to say about that one. So congratulations, pile number one. You've got your blue moon. And card number two. A win-win outcome is forecast. Full moon in Libra. This is awesome, guys. This is a yes. This isn't just a yes for you. This is a yes for if there is any other, even like an opposing party uh, in your situation, this is a win. It's a win-win. That says it all, right? Look, the scales are perfectly balanced. This is a yes for you, and it's a yes for everybody else in this situation. Even if you're asking, like, you know, should I break up with this person? The answer is yes, not only for you, but it's also saying that it will be best for, you know, the person you're breaking up with, even if you're worried about, you know, traumatizing them or putting them through hell or hurting their feelings and, you know, all of that breakup stuff. Saying that even if you have to do this thing that seems unpleasant, seems traumatizing to somebody, it could work out for their benefit. Um, of course, it doesn't mean go and do horrible things to people for no reason. But if you're doing something that is for your highest good and you're doing it from a place of, you know, pure intention, then it will work out for you and for everybody else. Full moon in Libra. It's a yes. Okay, card number three. It's time to release negativity. Full moon in Scorpio. This is a no, guys. I've actually, I liked that this card came up just before I filmed this. I was thinking about how if the full moon in Scorpio card came up, I would think it's a no because I've had, I don't like the full moon in Scorpio. I gotta say, you know, that happens in Taurus season and you're in the middle of this wonderful month, you know, where you're just really grounded in your rich, rich, rich luxurious surroundings and really enjoying eating a big bowl of pasta, enjoying going hiking, enjoying time with your friends and loved ones, and just really getting like that delicious grounded experience. And then comes the full moon in Scorpio just to like rock your shit. And people get upset. Everyone starts arguing. I get like, I find people get like so, so sensitive. Like, Every little thing people say that, you know, normally, let's say, you, you know, your boyfriend says something that normally you would just like let it slide, right? Or, you know, wouldn't even phase you, or you would just kind of understand that he didn't really mean that. And during the full moon in Scorpio, you'll, I, I anyway, I will like, I'll get upset. I'll start crying. Like, why'd you say that to me? You hurt my feelings, which like normally I don't deal with my husband that way. Right? And he does the same thing. It's, it goes both ways. So, and this comes back to releasing this negativity. Um... I see that as, you know, not, I mean, it is about letting go of negativity. It is about not being negative. But when it comes to Scorpio, you actually have to feel that negativity in order to release it. So during the full moon in Scorpio, it it's like that, that Pluto phenomenon, right? Where Pluto like goes down deep into our subconscious, digs up all of those negative feelings that we've been kind of just letting lie there, 
brings them all up, makes us experience them as we kind of, you know, bring them up and out and release them. So this is a no. And I would say if you were to pursue whatever you're asking about, despite receiving this no, it would, it would be, it would feel like a full moon in Scorpio. Everyone would be getting their feelings hurt and everyone would be butt hurt and having a bad old time and being oversensitive and you'd be dredging up a lot of junk. And, uh, I don't, I wouldn't really recommend it. Sorry, guys. And card number four. Hold your vision. Fixed moon. This is a yes, especially if you're asking about, like, should I keep doing something? Should I keep working on something? Um, is this dream going to come to manifestation? Like, this is basically saying, you know, <laughs> hold your vision. It's... It's exactly that. Keep going, keep doing, keep working on it, you know, nose to the grindstone. Um, I would say if you're thinking about quitting a job, if you're asking about like making a big change, quitting a job, leaving a relationship, um, just bailing on any kind of situation, I would say that, you know, this is kind of a no because, you know, this is a fixed energy. It's a fixed moon. Hold your vision. You want to stick to whatever it is you're doing. So the yes or no here will kind of depend on what your question is, um, but just keep this, hold your vision. That is the real answer here. Stay the course, okay? And card number five. A new start is coming, new moon. Awesome, this is a yes. This is like, a, this is like an ace. If you know we were doing this with a tarot deck, um, I would read this exactly like an ace, especially like an ace of cups. Um, this is a yes to basically anything, especially if you're asking about starting something brand new, um, making a big change, making some kind of paradigm, sh paradigm shift, all of that. This is the perfect time to be starting something. It's giving like a fresh slate, a fresh start, all of those wonderful things. The only thing I would say is if you were asking about, is everything going to stay the same? Some kind of question like that. Um, probably not because, you know, remember that the main energy here is a new start is coming that that's what that's the real answer here from this card so if you're wondering about you know is my you know job gonna stay stable <laughs> well maybe not maybe something will happen and you will lose that job or you know choose to quit that job for one reason or the other but with this new moon um don't worry about any kind of those kind of shifts because that just means you're moving on to a better new beginning, you know, so if you do end up losing a job in a few weeks or something, you will have a new, better job, you know, a new, better beginning. So just remember, this is a very positive card, even if it comes with some kind of ending, that's only so something better can begin. Okay, card number six. This energy is gaining momentum, waxing moon. I, this is a yes, this, I pull this card whenever I'm <laughs> starting something and I keep getting it. Um, so although this is a yes, it doesn't actually say that much about the ultimate outcome of a situation. It really speaks of you, you want to, if you're thinking about starting something, yes, begin that project, make that move, whatever it is. If you're thinking of changing something, shifting something, yes, these things are shifting, roll with that energy and there is like good trajectory heading outwards for how everything's going to work out. Everything is so far snowballing, working positively, going good places. But at this point in whatever process you're going through, there is no like the ultimate outcome is still up in the air. You still have different timelines open to you. Nothing is like settled in or locked in quite yet. So I would say, you know, keep charging ahead. Keep going with whatever you're going. This is a positive card. It's a very good card, but at this time, do not be like overly attached or locked into any particular outcome. You can still dream. You can still lean into your desired outcome, dream it into existence. That will increase its chances of, you know, of coming to fruition. But just be careful about being overly attached because at this point, um, you're still in the beginning stages and everything still needs to uh, kind of work farther down the line before you kind of lock in your outcomes. Okay, card number six. Adjustments are required, third quarter moon. Well, so this is a no. You can tell just by the picture on the card, you got this like 
skeletal tree. You know, it's got no leaves on it. Adjustments are required. I mean, basically enough said. Um, but this isn't like a super negative solid no. Because, you know, the real message here is adjustments are required. That's why I love these cards. They're really like specific and straightforward. So <sighs> whatever it is you're wondering about, right now it's not working out right now. That's the key here. Right now, things aren't going according to plan. Things aren't going to pan out. If you keep going as you're going, you're going to end up in, you know, you're going to end up in the mud. Your your cart is derailing off, off the trail here. But luckily, if you can pivot, if you can shift your perspective, shift your strategy, shift your habits, um, even shift your, like, I, something about emotions. Somebody is... Somebody is stuck in a rut with some kind of like emotional baggage or some kind of like a sentimentality they can't release. I, something is, I'm actually getting like tingles in the back of my head. <laughs> um, there's a specific message here for somebody who, you guys will know who you are. If you're hanging on to some kind of emotional baggage, you need to let it drop. Like cut that loose. Like those sandbags are holding you back. Like it's, uh, I'm seeing like somebody's trying to swim in the ocean, like with sandbags tied tied to their feet. So you need to cut those off. <laughs> and uh, if you can cut those sandbags off, um, you know, then you'll be able to swim to the surface and swim up the river and do whatever you want. So if you can make these adjustments, guys, if you can make that shift, if you can cut out those sandbags and release that baggage, you'll be good to go. Then you'll be having a fresh start and new possibilities will be opening up to you, but you need to cut something loose first. And card number eight, Surrender to the Divine Full Moon. Beautiful card. This is a yes, but there is a caveat here. This is a yes if you lean into this energy of surrendering to the divine. If you are trying to control outcomes to micromanage other people, or even if you're being like really, really hard on yourself, being really judgmental, about things you did or things you didn't do, all of that, that is those, those kind of left brain controlling energies are not serving you right now. You need to be leaning in to, I like attuning to the moon, such feminine energy, right? The full, that full moon. You need to be letting events take their course. You need to be leaning into the flow, surrender to the divine. And also with full moons, I don't know how you guys experience full moons, but for me, I mean, every full moon is different, right? But most of them, I end up feeling pretty amped up depending on the energy of the full moon. Like um, I talked earlier in another card about like Scorpio full moon, which makes me really like oversensitive and just like emotional and cryy and like bleh. Like the Scorpio full moon is not good for me. <laughs> but like the full moon in Leo uh, that just happened in January was is awesome for me. I just felt like just... Like, I felt like a lion wanting to roar. I felt so confident, so, like, glowing in myself, just, like, present and just, like, I am, right? Uh, I love the full moon in Leo. <laughs> so I always experience full moons as really capitalizing on whatever energy the moon is in at that time. So pay attention to the full moon. Whatever, Whenever you see this, pay attention to the next full moon. Uh, and what sign it's in, and pay attention to how you feel and how that might relate to whatever kind of full moon it is. Because you are being called to surrender to that full moon energy. This full moon card is a yes with lots of possibilities, lots of potency, as long as you are surrendering to the divine. The card says it perfectly. I don't have to add anything more than that. And card number 10, be bold and make the first move. This is a yes, especially <laughs> somebody, somebody, obviously, probably a lot of people are asking about whether they should ask somebody out. And according to YouTube, 100% of my viewers are female. Um, I don't know if that's like actually true about if, you know, every single person watching this, but at least 100% of the accounts that YouTube ha can read demographic data off of, they're all set to female. <laughs> so 
if you ladies are wondering if you should ask a guy out, <laughs> here's your answer. Be bold and make the first move. Sometimes guys get a little threatened by that, but this is your this is your key to just go ahead and do it. Um, most guys really like it because, you know, it gives them a break from having to uh, always do the chasing and always being making the first move themselves. And, you know, a lot of guys don't often feel like they're worthy of that kind of attention. So be prepared. If, if you are like asking a guy out, be prepared for him to feel uh, he'll be really surprised. Uh, and he might actually like don't be too worried about his initial reaction because he might be so shocked that he like will be really like you know, destabilized for a moment there. And, uh, you know, it's not because he isn't like flattered and it's not because he doesn't want to go out with you. It's just because he's like, wow, like, where did that come from? This was so unexpected. Like he is not expecting this from you at all. <laughs> so, but, you know, go ahead and, uh, and do this because the moon, you know, is calling you. Um, and I, I love that this is coming from a moon card because, <sighs> The moon is so fem feminine. 2020 is a time where the planet like energetically is so leaning in to feminine energy. And I can't really imagine a better time for more women to be stepping up and going what going after what they want. And, uh, you know, if you got this card and you're not asking about asking somebody out, um, whatever this is, <laughs> whatever you're asking about, go ahead and charge ahead. This is like a almost like a knight of wands to me, like grab life by the reins, carpe diem, whatever it is, go for it. There is a lot of fiery, fiery energy behind you and you're being called to be bold. And card number 10. Don't let pride in your way, full moon in Leo. Uh, very funny that this was actually upside down, especially because I, before I made this video, I went through every single card in this deck and made sure they were all facing the same way because I don't read these moon cards reversed. <laughs> and I made a specific effort to make sure that none of them were in reverse. So I don't know guys how this one is in reverse, but I think that means we're supposed to read it this way. Um, for now, let's just look at it this way so we can see what we're looking at. Don't let pride get in your way. And especially since this is, was in reverse, I feel that's really emphasizing, um, the no here. Normally full moon in Leo is really positive, positive energy where you feel f like full up with your own like divine power. At least that's how I experience it. With this in reverse, uh, somebody's probably overdoing it a little bit in like the ego department maybe feeling a little bit manic, um, feeling a little bit superior to others. Like this could be you or somebody else around you um, or just kind of a general vibe in your atmosphere. But there's definitely an energy of almost like putting yourself on the cross or maybe there's something you know you need to do, but you don't feel like you can do it because you you think it would be too embarrassing or you'd have to admit that you were wrong. So something like that is going on here, guys. So, I mean, the energy here is a no, but how you, how you interpret this will really depend on your question. Um, I would like you to just focus on this subtext here. Don't let pride get in your way. Guys, I love that this is the full moon in Leo card and my cat just started freaking out. She's like literally climbing the walls and running around screaming. I don't know if you could hear her. And she was pissing off the dog. <laughs> so um, also one other thing, uh, don't let pride get in your way. I'm also reminded of, you know, a pride of lions. So if there are people getting in your way, like, you know, your family, as in your, your pride, like your pack, if they're getting in your way, well, don't let them get in your way either. But... I really think the message here is to express your true authentic self, but in a way that is not arrogant. You don't, you don't want to be arrogant here. And uh, if you find yourself thinking like, why can't everybody just get their shit together? 
all of those things might actually be true. You might be surrounded by idiots. You might be the most talented person in the room. You might be the most intelligent, insightful, spiritually developed person you know. But I think we have to remember that everybody is on their own path in their own time. And we all go through the same or at least extremely similar patterns over all of our lifetimes. So whatever somebody you know is going through, you've probably been through something like that in another life. And they will go through whatever you're going through right now in another life. And really all of our lives are all happening at once. <laughs> so you need to gain a little bit of perspective on how every everybody is doing what they're supposed to be doing. Everybody is going through their patterns as their higher self is dictating. And you need to find a little bit of balance here between owning your own power. You know, you know, I'm not telling you guys to like water yourselves down or to, you know, dim your light. Um, but there needs to be a bit of balance. You need to be able to center yourself in humbleness uh, or at least respect for others and gratitude without tipping the scales one way or the other. You can recognize your own talents and your own strengths without putting yourself on a cross over them, without martyring yourself or without a feeling like you are intrinsically superior than other people. So this is a really tricky card. Um, so I'm going to have to say that it's a no, but You'll have to work through this energy of don't let pride get in your way, in your own way. Um, you know, run that through your own mental algorithms and work through that with your intuition. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope to see you again soon.